So much is going on right now regarding Manchester United, the Glazers, the 50 plus one, the potential takeover, the potential sale. There is so much movement and so much momentum behind this that it's not going away. It's only getting stronger. And today there's a very significant moment, as far as I'm concerned anyway, <clears throat> a significant moment in the fact that the Red Knights or a couple of the Red Knights have spoken out about the Glazers and they sent an open letter to Joel Glazer. If you don't know who the Red Knights are, uh, they're a consortium that happened back in 2010, back when the protests really kicked off and the Red Knights tried to build a takeover bid. <clears throat> it was made up by three or four uh, rich individuals such as Jim O'Neill, Paul Marshall, and there was another couple, I can't remember the name of, off the top of my head, and the idea that they were going to put up about 70% of the money in a billion pound takeover of Manchester United and a collective of like 30, 40 fans as well as other uh, usual fans. The takeover bid failed, but significantly today they have sent this open letter to Joel Glazer, which I'll run through now, and it's the first time in 11 years since they have spoken out about the Glazers and that is a significant moment. But what did they say in their letter? Let's take a look at it. <clears throat> a letter here sort of saying everything that we're saying. You know, things are wrong, things need to change. And these are what, well, the, this is what they've asked the Glazers to do or told them, I would say. Number one, converting all the shares into one type of share. Now, why is that significant? That's significant because with United, you get Class A shares and you have Class B shares, and they have very different voting rights. Off the top of my head, I think a Class A vote has 10 times the voting power of a Class B share, or the other way around. It's one of which, and the Glazers own everything of one type of share, and any other shares that anybody who buys it on the stock exchange buys, they buy the, the other type of share. What the Red Knights are saying there, I mean, they're not officially called the Red Knights, but I'm going to call them Red Knights. They haven't come out and said the Red Knights are back, but this is a big step. So that's step one, they're saying. Shares, make every share the exact same, so that voting power is shared equally. Number two, they're saying that they want the Glazers to reduce their ownership stake to 49.9%, down from about 75, have they got about 75% of the ownership? It doesn't matter how much physically they own. They, they own like basically 100% of the voting rights, but about around about 75% of the actual shares. Now, why is that significant? 49.9% doesn't take a mathematician to figure out 50 plus 1. That's where the, the ownership structure that, comes, that we all want to see come in is that 50 plus 1. And I'm going to be doing a lot of content over the next 10 days. So make sure you please take a second now, subscribe to the channel. There's going to be a lot coming out, which is very important for United fans to understand and to hear. I'm going to be speaking to a couple of German journalists on Monday, speaking about the 50 plus one model, an explainer, exactly how it works. I'm going to try and speak to a legal expert because Man United are a publicly traded company. It's a little bit more complicated than a lot of the German football teams out there, which are privately owned. But Borussia Dortmund is a publicly traded company, so there is precedent. It can happen. And I want to find out more information about that and bring it to you. Also going to be doing stuff on the government legislation, which is coming out. There's a lot of stuff, and it's all very important that you all understand it as much as possible ahead of what is going to be the big protest on the 2nd of May, which I'll get into later. But back to this letter. Point three, this offering should be undertaken at a discount to the current trading price. They're saying that basically, Glazers, you should sell your shares back, but sell it back at the price you got them for rather than how much they are now, which won't happen, but it's an idealistic point of view there and then while the shift of share ownership is underway you should announce a new supervisory board on which supporters have 50 percent plus one controlling vote as i said that's the 50 plus one model which people are really talking about point five the new reserve powers for this supervisory board would include permission to join any new league or competition changes in ticket prices and an annual commitment of 10 million per year to manchester-based charities again they're really going all in with this letter they're telling the glazers to sell their shares back for cheaper and to give 10 million a year to charities I like the idea. I like the idea at least. Point six, a cessation of future buybacks of shares unless they are approved by the supervisory board. So they're basically saying that you can't then just buy all your shares back when you want. The board has to make it official. Now, <clears throat> this is significant. This is really significant because 
When it comes to protests, like this protest, it's going to happen on Saturday. I'm not going to belittle the protest, but I don't think it's going to have that much of an impact. First of all, it's not on a match day. Second of all, it's not really been organised by the key supporter groups inside United, and therefore it's going to be very hard to mobilise the right sort of people that will make the right sort of noise. It will make some sort of noise, I have no doubt. And everybody who's going down, go down. Show your discontent towards the Glazers. I will not say anything against that. But on the 2nd of May... That's when the big protest will happen. First of all, it's on a match day. And it's not just on a match day. It's Liverpool at Old Trafford. That's when you need to get down there. That's when the big protest will happen. I'm going to be doing plenty of coverage about that in the lead up to it as well. But there's so much. The reason I'm getting the reason I'm I'm excited about what I'm seeing is because <clears throat> It's all good and well, United fans being angry and protesting about the Glazers and doing what we can. But that's only one type of noise. And ultimately, it's not a type of noise which is really going to scare the Glazers. If the Glazers didn't get scared by what we did in 2004, and they still bought us and they still kept... They, they're stubborn people. And pressure from us will make some noise, but it won't make them sell. It won't make them do anything. But pressure from us at the same time that the government is looking about bringing new legislation in about fan ownership of clubs and changing the ownership structure inside English football at the same time as the Red Knights are coming out and they're voicing their discontent again. It's from all different angles and that's it's like a top-down pressure that's happening to Manchester United at the moment. The fans were all bubbling up and were bubbling up in a unified voice together. Those guys that did the protest at Carrington was the perfect type of protest. I can see, it's really pissing me off actually. You see Sky News, you see the mirror trying to say that they're so-called United fans, or they're calling them the mob. It wasn't a mob. It was like 20, 30 lads all went to Carrington, did what they wanted to do, got into Carrington, spoke to Solskjaer, gave him a piece of their mind, said things to the players, and left. No violence, no danger, no damage, no anything. It was the perfect type of protest. The protest which made noise, brought attention to a key point, without making anyone feel endangered, it was the perfect protest. So to call them the mob, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And building on top of that, this this letter from Jim O'Neill and Paul Marshall is massively significant. As far as I'm concerned, it's significant. Because it's the first time in 11 years that they've openly and vocally gone back to what failed in 2010. And 2010 was the last time that this really happened when it kicked off about the Bonds and, and the Glazers trying to restructure their loan deal. This feels bigger in my opinion now this feels bigger because Edward was left over this European Super League and the, the amount of discontent that's coming towards it as I said I keep saying it, it's top-down pressure it's like that it's like they're in a vice that's getting squeezed from both angles Pre previously it was it, it was from the bottom up we, we were we were together we were pushing but we ultimately couldn't do enough and we couldn't well the Red Knights couldn't get enough money together to change that ownership structure but this one is different because it's coming from the top. It's coming from the bottom at the same time. And Ed Woodward has resigned. It's perfect. Their lapdog has gone. They don't have anybody in the club now that they can rely on anywhere near as much as Ed Woodward. Now, Richard Arnold is being eyed up as a potential replacement for Woodward. But as far as I'm concerned, he is Ed Woodward. He's, he's just as bad. It's like getting Matt Judge in to replace Ed Woodward. It's just... It is who. I don't know who's going to replace it. I'm going to do plenty of videos on that after these protests happen. But for me, my pure focus right now is the protests and this letter from... I'm oh, sorry, I'm just here looking at Twitter. I'm seeing Andy Green coming out, speaking about it. I'm seeing uh, Andy Mitten coming out, speaking about it. It's a very, very important letter as far as I'm concerned. As I said, it signifies 11 years since the Red Knights tried with their consortium to do a takeover bid, which ultimately failed. But that was the last time when the Glazers were really challenged as owners of Manchester United. That's now going to change. In 2021, this year, the Glazers are going to face their biggest and loudest and most sustained challenge against their ownership of the club. And it's not just coming from fans. It's not just coming from the Red Knights. It's going to come from the government as well. All of that together means that there's more fuel to this fire than there's ever been before. 
and there's it is the greatest chance that we will we may ever have as Manchester United fans of getting a fan ownership structure brought into our club. And imagine what a future could look like at Manchester United if the decisions about our club are made by fans of the club. It's a be- it's it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful idea. And up until a week ago, it would have been fantastical to even think it. But things change. And all of a sudden, we've gone from the European Super League to football and Manchester United, as far as I was concerned, being dead, to maybe Manchester United could be more alive than we've ever been since 2005. That would be an amazing turnaround. But I'm excited about that Red Knights letter. I want to do this video, let you know about what that letter means. Let's see what happens, whether the Red Knights formally come out and say, we're back in business, let's see what's on the table. Obviously, it's a bit different this time because they're going to have to come up with like three, four billion instead of one billion or two. The numbers are much bigger. But irrelevant to that, that letter's significant as far as I'm concerned. And it, it, it really, that letter really is when it's starting, it's starting to get, not official, official's the wrong word for it, but you can see it happening in front of your eyes. And that protest on the 2nd of May that happens before Liverpool, there'll be plenty more details coming out about that. That's the one I really encourage you all. If you're going to go to one protest, that's the one you go to. I'm not going to belittle the one that's going to happen on Saturday. I'm sure it will have some sort of impact, but nothing. It will. It really will just pale in comparison to what happens on the 2nd of May when hopefully thousands of Reds march before the Liverpool game against the Glazers. That's going to be a big, big day for United fans. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. As I said, I'm going to have a lot of content about the 50 plus one model, about the Glazers. Hopefully, well, there's there's tons I'm trying to do. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you get involved. I hope this video helped you understand why that Red Knights letter is important and what it means. And as I said, they really want that share structure to be changed to get rid of the fact that, the, that different shares are different voting rights and that should be abolished and they also want the Glazers to reduce their ownership in the club to 49.9% that would be a beautiful thing if both can happen oh man that would be dreamy but let's see what happens but the protest it's coming the Glazers we're coming for you Woo Woo was first <laughs> gone European Super League in the bin your next Glazers